Hey guys, my name is Will Cecil, and today I just wanted to give you a quick tutorial of how you can use Pixel Encoder to create grungy, pixely animations in Adobe After Effects and Adobe Premiere Pro. So, uh, to get started, all you got to do is open up a new composition in After Effects and load in a piece of source footage that you want to convert. And you're actually going to apply this plugin uh, the same way you would apply any of your favorite effects from within After Effects. So you would click the layer and you'd go up to the top bar where it says effect, scroll down. It'll be in a folder called Will Cecil and then it'll be Pixel Encoder. And it'll open up the effect controls window here and as you can see it's already working its magic. Uh, so I'm going to go over all of the different parameters kind of one by one just so that you have a little bit more in-depth understanding of what they do and how you can use them to get the exact look that you're going for. So, the very first one is uh, the presets, the different pattern presets. Pixel Encoder comes with uh, a number of included presets like high detail, numbers and letters, horizontal lines, dots, etc., etc. And these are just going to be different patterns that make up the actual image. So, for instance, high detail is going to be uh, an array of these kind of dithering inspired patterns. Uh, numbers and letters is going to be, you see, exclamation points and apostrophes, and there are, are others if we were to play around with it some. Horizontal lines is, of course, uh, horizontal lines with differing uh, widths that make up the different gradient levels of the image. Um, so I'm not going to go through every single one. I'm going to let you guys explore those on your own some, but that's kind of a quick overview of what those are. Next, you're going to have the actual size of those patterns. So for instance, Say you wanted these individual square patterns to be a little bit bigger uh, for the effect you were going for. You could just take this slider and scale it up some. Let's go ahead and set that to 5. And as you can see, now the individual patterns are bigger within the image. So this is a really nice way to kind of finely tune uh, the detail of your image. So if you wanted something really kind of abstract, you can make it really big. If you wanted it to be much easier to see. You can see it's almost got a bit of a halftone effect. I'm actually gonna drop the horizontal and vertical details. You can see that it's almost got kind of a halftone effect to the image. It's a lot higher resolution per se. Um, so as I'm, as I'm sure you could guess, there's a lot of uh, customization there. You can do a lot with that. Next, you have brightness and contrast. These are pretty basic controls, but they just help you to finely tune the image and get it exactly how you want. So for instance, this is a video of me up against a dark background. Say I had the brightness really high. Say I shot it like this out of camera, and I just wanted that background to be a solid color. I could just take the contrast and crank it up. And as you see, it just pushes everything back a little bit. It clears up that background for you. And it's just a really quick way without having to apply multiple effects on top of each other. So it saves your rendering a little bit of bandwidth and it just makes everything a little bit more efficient to have it baked in like that. Next, we're gonna do the uh, horizontal and vertical detail. So let me explain how, how it's a little different from the pattern size, so let me just go into the explanation of a little bit of the technical side, so stick with me for just a second. Um, just so you can see those, I'm gonna scale these up a little bit. So if we zoom in, you can see that the image is not just comprised of the actual patterns, but it's also got blocks that the patterns are mapped onto. So I'll adjust the detail up a little bit so you can see what I mean. As I scale this up, you can see the patterns, or the blocks rather, start to get more visible, and you can see it's these big chunks now. So the horizontal and vertical detail lets you control the X and the Y size of these individual blocks. So you can, go, you can do something really crazy, make it like this. You won't even be able to tell what the image is. But if you're going for something interesting, it might work. Or you can take it all the way down like I had it just a second ago. And it almost looks like the original image just with this kind of halftone dithering pixel effect. So all of these so far, everything here is keyframeable. You can animate everything. Say you wanted to start really high resolution like this, and over time you wanted it to turn into this blocks, you can do that. Um, so there's a lot of really great customization there. And then lastly, and these are pretty self-explanatory, but I'll still go through them just in case, uh, you have pixel color and background color. 
So as I'm sure you can already guess, the pixel, in co the pixel color simply decides what color that the pattern is actually filled in with. So you can make that red, blue, green. You can do a lot of stuff with that. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that at white for now. And then the background color is exactly the same thing before the background. Now, transparent background is where it might not be quite as obvious, but it's still got a, a really, really nice feature to have. So say you wanted to take this pixel effect and layer it on top of each other, or layer it on top of itself. It might not be obvious how you do that, but it's really easy. All you would do is you'd go down here and you would click the layer that you're using as source footage. And I'm gonna hit Control D just to duplicate that. And in the top layer, we're gonna check that box that says transparent background. All that's gonna do is it's gonna take this black background and remove it. So you can't tell yet because it's the same settings, but this is actually two versions laid on top of each other. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom one and just so that you can see, I'm gonna change that to red and then I'm gonna change the preset. Bump that brightness up so you can see it. And as you can see, now we've got two different pixel effects laid on top of each other like this. And you can do some really interesting effects like that. Um, and this is just one of those ways that if you, if you get creative, you can, really, you can really push pixel encoder to do stuff that you might not uh, might not be immediately obvious out of the box, but these features can combine in some really cool and really interesting ways. Uh, so, so that's a pretty quick, but uh, a little bit more thought out explanation of what everything does, some ideas of how you might be able to use it. Um, and then the very last thing that we'll go over is when you very first load Pixel Encoder into your setting, you're gonna have a big X watermark on it. This is just a watermark for security purposes. You can remove that by going over here and clicking register. It'll pop up this window and you can just copy and paste the license key that came with your purchase. Just push it in here, click activate. It may take a few seconds, but that X will go away and you are off to the races. Same thing, this uh, uh, pixel encoder works in Premiere Pro. The only difference being that uh, to load it on, you can go over here to effects scroll down to Will Cecil again, and click and drag it on. And instead of a register button to get rid of that watermark, you're actually gonna hit this setup button. Uh, it'll look a little differently depending on whether you're on Windows or Mac and which OS you're on, but it'll have, again, I already have an a, a license activated, so it's not showing for me, but it'll have a box where you can enter in the license and it'll have a button that says okay and cancel. Again, you just put it in, wait a few seconds and it'll go away and that's, that's it. That is a really quick tutorial on some of the basic functions and how you can use Pixel Encoder to do some pretty cool stuff. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it, and if you ever have any questions about it or if you ever run into any issues, please feel free to reach out to me at willcecil.net. Um, I, I love hearing from you guys, and I'm always happy to help troubleshoot any issues you might run into. So without further ado, uh, happy Pixel Encoding.